Hello everyone, I'm Pastor Matthew and so glad you can join us with another episode of Testimonies of Encounters with God. I call them I Love Jesus Testimonies. And they're just stories of ordinary people going through their lives, but God intervened and God, in different ways, there'll be different things that are shared. Sometimes people give their bit of a background, uh, but a significant event that took place in their lives, which helped them to grow in God and to believe the gospel. So you're invited to watch these testimonies and be encouraged, be blessed. And I'll see you at the end to just also share a word again of encouragement and what we really want you to be a part of the family of God and to know the Lord and to all of us to enter the kingdom of heaven. So be encouraged by these stories. Hi, my name is Brian, Brian Bailey. And I just want to share a um, time when I came from being a non-believer to a believer. Um, I'd been invited to an Easter camp by my cousin, and uh, that's the first real time that I'd heard the Christian message as such. I might have heard bits before, but because my family or I didn't go to church, um, sometime after that, I was phoned by a friend that I was getting socialising with, which I, it was a group I didn't really want to socialise with, and I was going in that direction. And he phoned me one uh, Sunday afternoon, he said, oh, there was... Um, two girls walking along the road towards the beach and uh, he had heard that I'd met this one, Michelle, and uh, got to know her and the other girl he was after, would we come with him and would I come with him and it would be a way of picking these two girls up. So I said yes, we picked the two girls up, went out for the day down the beach or whatever. When we came back, uh, when we, Michelle hopped out of her car, we dropped at her place, she said, uh, I'm going to church tonight, would any of you like to come? Well, the other two were more than uh, frightened and took off in a direction, but for some reason I said yes. And I'm not sure whether it's for the girl to get out of their company or what that pull was, but I went to church that night and it took some time to um, digest all that a long time because my parents had warned me that go to church but don't ever join. That was their view on, uh, on churches. So sometime after that I went to a um, Capital Ten convention in Wellington. Michelle invited me down there and I went with others in a car down to there. Uh, she was in the uh, part of a singing group down there. And when we were coming back, I, I used to go out for a smoke and that because I wasn't a Christian, I'd walk around Wellington and have a smoke while they're having their Christian activities. But coming back over the Farrata, the hills between uh, Wire and Gisborne late at night, it struck me, it was like a voice to me from God, in a sense it wasn't audible, loud, but it was as strong as I could imagine. If, it, if we all died in this car tonight, I would be the only one not going to heaven. So after that, on the uh, seventh, that was a Queen's birthday weekend, sometime, it wasn't that year, but on the 7th of July, 1968, um, on a Sunday night, instead of going to church, Michelle and I sat down at the beach, and um, she led me to the Lord down there. And so at nine o'clock at night, that was when that happened, I went to the pastor's house because him and I didn't quite see eye to eye and I confessed my uh, faith to him and he got a surprise. He thought we were in uh, some form of other trouble with a young lady, but uh, I confessed my faith there and I was baptised in water in the church the following week on the 14th of 7th, uh, 1968. Michelle, who had made a commitment in that area, had an aglow meeting combined with a full gospel businessman's dinner, pre-Christmas dinner. So I went along to that, and in his appeal at the end, he said, anyone coming would like to come forward as a Christian or to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I just said a prayer to the Lord, if this is real, this is what I want. And the next moment was the amazing moment of my life. It felt as though I was a train to me, I could explain it as a train load of love coming through me. It was uh, so powerful that it changed my life and view on things. And so I'm one who has believes in that, ex that experience. So we went on to be um, elders in that church and then we went to a Pentecostal church for five years. And then on the same area years later, in the year 2000, coming back from a Wellington trip um, over the same place where I made my commitment in the Fororatas, I had a vision because the church we were in was changing 
direction. And I prayed to the Lord, Lord, what have you got in, in store for us this year? And he had one word, dove. So the next day or two, my cousin Liz phoned me for a, uh, we have an ancestor who was burnt at the stake, common ancestor. So he phoned me about breakfast time and I let it go to, um, to answer phone and then he rang back and he said, oh, you don't need to look for that article, I've already found it. And I said, well, I was just gonna ask you, what's your church group up north that you're in? And he said the word dove, it's a, a dove fellowship. And I said, I had a word from the Lord that we were, should look into the dove family of churches. So after that, we started, a, um, with their blessing, we started a um, house church in Gisborne and it grew into two house churches in Gisborne. And we did that for um, uh, 13 years and until we uh, retired and moved to Mokaroa. And now we're in the Mokaroa Community Church and we're being blessed by Matthew, our pastor, and the congregation that surrounds us in love. And uh, we haven't always had a perfect uh, run in our in life, as people don't, but uh, we've been blessed in more than one way. And so I want to give thanks to the Lord for calling me. But I just want to end on this note that I have a Bible in my hand, a New Testament. So as part of the, uh, when I mentioned at the beginning that I was brought up in a non-Christian family, when our kids were dedicated, um, my grandfather wouldn't have anything to do with, he wouldn't come to the church, he wouldn't, uh, my parents didn't go to church, but they did come for our two kids' dedications only and my grandfather wouldn't even do that. So when they were through a building program, pulling down the old church in Gisborne and building the new one, which I was a part of the building program, I had a phone call from the oldest person in the congregation. He said, I found your grandfather's Bible. I said, oh, it won't be my grandfather's because one, he never went to church, and if he ever went to church, he wouldn't own a Bible. I know him, he never mentioned it in his whole life. He said, well, you better come and down and get it because of how, Building's just about on the ground and we've found this Bible. So I went down there and I'd like to share this moment with you. To Wilfred Bailey, the Church of Christ, Robert Road, Gisborne, which was the church I was introduced to through Michelle, my wife, who became my wife, as a remembrance of a life's decision to fully surrender to Jesus Christ as your Saviour, 18th of April, 1926. Now, those words are outstanding because he made a life decision and fully surrendered his life to Jesus on the 18th of April 1926 and yet at some point in his life he turned his back seemingly on God and wouldn't have it at least on the church and wouldn't have anything else to do with it so I had a background of Christian heritage that I didn't know about and uh, that's a sad thing because I only found out after he died and if I'd found this Bible and been introduced to the Bible uh, while he was still alive, I would have had so much to talk to him about. But um, thank God that um, Michelle and I are um, born again Christians, and our daughter has made a commitment in that area. And uh, we pray for our uh, rest of our family who have been brought up in the Christian way. Well, I'm Jo Wake. I'm a resident of the Omokaroa Community Church and have been for the last oh, over 32 years. I've known it for over 60 years, but I've been a resident for 32 years. And I've always felt uh, that my faith is there to guide me and to give me strength. Do you have any favourite Bible verse or anything that comes to the mind that you like? Well, I, the Lord's Prayer, I always say that. How did you become a Christian? Was it that your family? Well, my family were always um, Christians. My father uh, belonged to Synod, and uh, the family all went to church. We lived in Narrawahia, next door to the Anglican Church, so it was very easy to go to church. Do you have a personal friendship with God? Well, I think I have, because I always feel he's there to support me. Um, and guide me um, because at times you do need support and guidance because you're not sure just what is the best thing to do but he's always been there for me. What would you say to an un a person who doesn't know or doesn't believe? Well I'd say to that person it's up to you um, to perhaps come come to church with me and see whether you 
get anything from the support of the church or whether you would rather not come but I would leave it up to the person because I, I believe that it's supported me and helped me all the way through my life. Well, I was put in Sunday school at three <laughs> and uh, during the war years the church was one's life and so one went through the Sunday school. Um, by the time I was 16 I was teaching in the Sunday school and had made a commitment to the Lord by then and I was soon leading the Sunday school. <laughs> singing in the church choir, and as a teenager, participating in a lovely fellowship group of young people where I met Ben. And so I met him when I was 16. <laughs> and as a group of young people, we used to go to the little churches surrounding Pretoria, this is in South Africa, and take services, and sometimes Ben would preach, or an, uh, uh, um, Dennis McChrystal, who later became a Methodist minister, he would preach, and we would sing, and that was our mission. We would do that on Sundays, and on Friday evenings, we'd all meet in the McChrystal's home and sing choruses and have prayers and so on. So my whole background was Christian. I don't have a specific moment where I actually made a commitment. It was there from very early on. And Ben became a local preacher in the in the church. And but when we were when we were married in that same church, one of my precious God moments was that we had communion at the communion rail in our wedding ceremony. And that was very special. And when the children came along, we, we did less in the church, of course, because we were very busy. But the commitment was always there. We've always gone to church, sung in the choir, and did flowers, and baked cakes, and done all the things that are needed to keep a church going. And so it's just been a wonderful journey. The journey with the banners began when our minister's wife in Westville decided that the church needed beautification. She got together a little group and we had a prayer meeting and we prayed about what we could do and what words we could use. And as in a flash, I just received the words, be still and know that I am God, because just two weeks previously, we'd been in the mountains with our son, and he had taken a photograph of a beautiful panorama, and I knew that was it. I got home and phoned him, said, please have that photo developed, send it to me, I'm making a church banner. And that's how the first one came to be, and it hangs in the Westfall Methodist Church in uh, in just outside Durban in South Africa. And so many people have said to me, it has given them encouragement and peace. And one lady in particular, whose son was fighting at the border, said she would look at that banner and she would receive peace that day. So when we moved here to Omakaroa, the church walls were quite bare and I thought this is it the space needs to be filled and so the first one I made was be still and know that I'm God because I felt that our church needed that as well that is that is how the journey began and since then I've been inspired to make several others and this one if you want to you know, sometimes when one is reading the Bible, words jump out at you. And these words did one day, very seriously. They stayed in the back of my mind, niggling away until I had done something with them. This is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. 
Ask where the good way is and walk in it and you will find rest for your soul. That is Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16. It is Jesus' symbol. It's the cross and the, the, the peace. The Alpha and Omega, um, God has said, he, and Jesus has said, He is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And the fish, of course, is the first Christian symbol. Uh, it was a symbol adopted by the early Christians. I have mentioned the words of this banner, and the, uh, this, this actually, I took a picture of the Kaimais down on our Omakaroa beach, and then used fabric paints to paint the mountains and the sky used some of my daughter-in-law's wedding dress material dyed yellow for the light on the sea. When Matthew preached his first sermon, he preached about Jesus being Lord. And so this banner was made for Matthew, Jesus is Lord. And I was very fortunate to find the fabric in the first shop I looked in and so that means it was meant. When it comes easily, I know God is behind the work. This, was, this banner was made to fill an empty space behind the pulpit, and it's meant to represent a stained glass window with all, and also the light of Jesus shining on the congregation. This is the congregation down here, and of course, the ray of light is shining on them. And John 8 verse 12 is Jesus saying, I am the light of the world. This one uh, is, is basically a copy of a, a picture of a banner that was sent to me and I thought our church needs that as well. So it is also just um, fabric stitched on fabric and the message is clear, and it is, of course, a Pentecost banner. For me, um, the best banners begin with prayer, and I regard banners as almost like a parable of Jesus. He focused on the word through parables, and this is another way of focusing on the word through pictures and words that people can read in church. This banner is very special to me because we stood at that empty tomb in Jerusalem a few years ago and I felt convinced that this was the place. It's in the, in the Garden of English Missionaries in Jerusalem and they are also convinced that this is the place where Jesus was buried, and we walked into the tomb, and we could see two empty places, and we could see the groove where the, um, where the uh, flat stone was always uh, run along in front of the tomb. And so I felt I just needed to draw that picture and and put it up here for Easter. And so I did two simple figures of the two women at the tomb, and not very visible, but there's the angel saying, he is not here, he is risen. This banner is our church's banner. I don't know who made it. It was made before I came to this church, but it is a beautiful depiction of what our church stands for. Hello, I'm Peter and I love Jesus because how can you not love Jesus? If you see what's happening around and when Jesus is involved it's just absolutely amazing. And I look at an example of my dad who was a GP in a small Dutch farming village and the way he treated his clients and his patients was just amazing. He was always there. And we're talking now about the 1940s and the 50s. So really in the little farming areas there was no 
no money around and my dad visited his patients on a motorbike in the cold nights and just just looking after his people was just his 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 forte and um, there was no money around here after the war he didn't earn anything he never got rich but he was a classic example to me as somebody who through the love of Jesus spread this, that to, to other people, especially to his clients. And um, I was born in a Christian family, the youngest of seven, and we all have been ingrained with that love for Jesus. We are blessed with our family. We've got three children and seven grandchildren, and all by one are still going strong for the Lord, which is a real blessing. And of course, it's uh, very simple to say that at the end of your life, there's only one choice, which is either you go, either go to hell or to heaven. And I don't like anybody to go to hell and become a Christian. Because as the saying goes, Jesus is the answer for the world today. And that is just so true. Now, don't wait too long because time is getting short. So get on with it, please. All right. Hello, my name is Joke. And I'm married to Peter. We both uh, were born in the Netherlands and I was born in a family of six children. I was the second one. And my parents had a faith but didn't know how to share that. But they had a desire to baptize every one of us as babies and promised to give us a Christian upbringing. But as they had no role modeling by themselves, they sent us to Christian schools. In the Netherlands, Christian schools are just equally uh, supported and uh, by the government. So I went to a Protestant kindergarten, primary school and high school. At the age of 14, the uh, principal on a Monday morning had a uh, Bible session that we usually had on a Monday morning and asked who was in church yesterday. I didn't go to church, so I felt a bit embarrassed in a Christian school and asked my mother, why don't we go to church? Oh, she said, I'm too busy cooking the meal and so on, but no matter what, you can go to church. I thought, oh my goodness. So I dragged two of my younger brothers with me and went from 14 year onwards to, to church ever since. And uh, we did go youth group, but uh, we had a faith. I had a faith. I trusted everything that's been taught, I believed, but I did not have an understanding of a relationship with Jesus, which came much later in life. But uh, Peter, I met at youth group, and later he asked me to um, go out with him. And the second time we went out, he asked me to go to, with him to New Zealand. Because Peter was 10 years old when one of his brothers went to New Zealand to be a farmer. And he wanted to do the same. And my answer was, no way. He could have chosen another girl because I was not the one, but no, he fell in love and stayed with me. And five years later, we married. And 15 years after that, we, uh, the circumstances turned against me. So we came to New Zealand, four out of five in our family, three children, eight, 10 and 12. And four out of five were happy, apart from me. It took another five years before I finally could see there was some beauty in New Zealand. But in those time, our, our children went to Easter camp, which was an unusual thing in the Netherlands, but when they were teenagers, they went to an Easter camp and the Lord, or the Holy Spirit fell on all these 110 children at that camp and the kids came back on high. They were born again and we had no idea what it all meant, but they pointed out the truth that they had learned from the Bible and gave us a new understanding and we wanted to know more. And that was the time when I started to search. And at 49, I finally, the penny dropped and, I, and it clicked what I needed to do. I needed to surrender my life to Christ. And from that day onwards, the Bible became alive. Before that, the Bible wasn't, yeah, a book full of history of the Lord and so on, but it never, meant anything special to me but when i just gave my heart to the lord the holy spirit filled my heart and i just started to understand the scriptures from a to z it was a wonderful experience and ever since i have grown and grown and grown in my faith my heart is great loving for jesus 
The reason that I love Jesus so much is because he revealed the Father's heart to all of us. Well, I'm Barbara and this is my story. I love Jesus because his love is so much greater than mine. He gave me Christian grandparents who loved him. Grandpa used to take the Bible down from the shelf after breakfast and he would read a scripture and uh, then we would all kneel beside our chairs and he would lead us in prayer and then we'd say the Lord's Prayer together. Jesus gave me an aunt who taught us choruses like into my heart, into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. He gave me a mother who loved him and she would often say, everyone needs to accept Jesus as their personal saviour. She gave us uh, postal Sunday school lessons and when I was 10 I took my lessons with me on holiday and one of the questions was, have you asked Jesus to be your personal saviour? Well, what could I do? I had to agree with the truth I was taught and so I asked him to be my saviour. My secondary schooling was cut short and so I worked on my parents' farm for two years and then I left home to do a dressmaking apprenticeship. I went to Bible class and a Bible scripture just jumped out at me. As many as received him who believed in his name, to them gave he the right to become children of God. I was 17 then. Jesus gave me a believing husband and a wonderful family. And as an adult student, I did sixth form English and typing. And when on holiday, I made this song from scripture. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. For everything that was written in the past was written there to teach us so that from endurance and encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. Jesus bled and died to save me and everyone else from death and hell. Jesus rose from the dead to give me and everyone else life and purpose. He's at the Father's right hand praying for me and all believers. His Holy Spirit lives in me, restores me, renews me and gives me the grace and mercy I need every day of my life. I want everyone to know him and he's promised to come back and renew all things. Amen. My husband was a teacher of technical things and um, he was also the night class supervisor and so he would give himself a free sub <laughs> and go to wood carving or uh, weaving or pottery or finished up with oil painting and that's why I have so many paintings in my house. So when did he make this? Oh, I don't know what year it was. But Between 67 and 2000. <laughs> How did your husband become a Christian? Oh, well, he went to Bible class as a young person in Wanganui and he did his secondary schooling and um, apprenticeship in fitting and turning there. Um, but then his mother died and she was living in Otahu. Well, uh, they were living in Otahu and he was devastated and really it was the, the minister at Otahu who helped him through that time and he put his faith firmly in the Lord Jesus. Okay, this is my husband trying to get a, a peacock to display for us and he sure got it going. We're out at the bird gardens at Caddy Cat. Okay, this is my mother. Um, she lived to 105 and um, she loved the Lord. She gave her heart to the Lord when she was 16. 
And um, my father was a, a good man, but he didn't give his heart to the Lord until he was 40. They'd been, I'm sorry, they'd been married 40 years. And um, the minister at that time led him to trust in Jesus. And he gave his testimony at church that day. I love Jesus. Uh, but I didn't fall in, fall in love with Jesus because of a tragedy or a stroke of fate. Um, I had the luxury or the, was lucky to grow up with Jesus, like a brother. I grew up in um, southern Germany, so my origin is German. And I grew up in a um, Protestant, sheltered, Christian environment, I would say over generations um, and my parents are members of the United Methodist Church UMC and um, we we're very involved in the whole um, church affairs like volunteering uh, Sunday qu choir book sales yeah all that stuff um, and a lot of their friends, of course, were church-related. And um, so I grew up with all those friends and, and men and women and children. And I thought they're all uncles, aunties and cousins. So it never really clicked that they're not my brothers or sisters. Well, I thought they are. And that maybe was maybe the same mindset with Jesus. So Jesus was my brother. I grew up with him. I can't stress enough to people like um, to sum it up. It would be better with Jesus and with with a faith. It's not enough just to think, oh yeah, it's an easy life here. Uh, you have to contribute a little bit more and um, to appreciate what Jesus did for us. Oh, well, yeah. It would be nice if more people could see that or believe it. And yeah. My kids sometimes ask me really cool questions and they're like, who can create this? And I said to them, like, I know, this is so unbelievable, beautiful, exactly. It is so, you can't explain it with scientists and, and the Big Bang or... It's too, we can't imagine it and that's the thing, like, just let go. Let let it flow like we cannot know everything and we can't we've, God is so big and so deep of course we cannot all understand it but we have to try at least and by showcasing or by role modeling um, mercifulness and, and, and to, togetherness and volunteering and helping out where you can and it's just little things and hopefully you get copy paste by other people and they realize actually he lives a pretty good life why is that you know, well it's because I have a faith and I have great friends and friends in church and, and they help out in some ways and it's just sort of a, a whole dynamic and yeah, that was the lucky thing. I grew up with that dynamic, so for us it was like the norm. This is Suzanne, my wife, for a long time now, uh, 12 years. And, um, oh. <laughs> and here's Flynn, our here's youngest Flynn. son. Where's me? Five years old now, and we have Lenny and Annabelle um. probably coming around the corner very soon. <laughs> From school? Yeah. And we came to New Zealand in 2009, for good. So our wedding was our last big party with all our big families we left behind. Back in Germany. Yeah, all my families um, have been believers and we grew up with church. We've all, been, uh, we've all had our baptism when we were really still little confirmation it is um, at around 13 14 when you make really your own choices and then um, yeah we continued living that through we've got um, we, we got married in a, a church in Germany in Bavaria close to where we where I studied in the end yes and um, everyone came together 
and it's always been great and nice celebrations. And yeah, we've always had good role models. And so is Jesus and so was God for us always, yeah. My name is Annabelle. My name is Flynn. My name is Lenny. My name is Sebastian. And I'm Suzanne. And we live in beautiful Omakura. See all the um, wonderful things that recognize the wonderful things that God does when you, you come to know him and, and what a great great miracle it was that happened to me it made me see the way to him. Why do you think it took you a long time to see the um, see the truth? Well uh, I was just mad mad workaholic farmer and I never had time in my view, I never had time. Too busy. I'll, um, I'll, I'll leave that for, to another day. You know, one day I'll do it, but I was too, too busy working and thinking about the farm. And so, yeah, so I just kept putting it off. I love Jesus because he saves my life. As a farmer, one day in 2006, I went to the runoff to check the heifers. A large Hereford bull had got a piece of wire wrapped around one of his back legs. He was very placid as I took him to the stockyard. However, when I was inside of the yard with him, his temperament changed and he charged me to crush me against the wooden rails. I hadn't time to climb out of the way, but a scream came out. I thought I will be killed. With this he halted and went back to the other side of the yard as calm as could be. The scream had to be an angel of the Lord's scream. God's calmness came over me and I put the now also calm bull into a confined race and removed the wire from around his leg. And we turned him to his paddock. I believe Satan sent an evil spirit into the bull to incite him to do harm to me because he could see that Satan that I was coming and drawing close to Jesus. I've got a uh, um, psalm here I want to quote. Psalm 91 and 11 says, For he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go and in times of stress, stress and fear. The next Sunday I was in church. I've attended a Makaroa community church since November 2006. I was baptised by full immersion on 1910-2008 and gave my life to Jesus and asked him to come into my life. My wife Dallas and her family and our grown-up children have been praying for my salvation. A couple of weeks after this incident with the bull and the angel, we visited our family in Matamata. Our six-year-old grandson came up to me, Thomas was his name, and said, Pop, I believe you have found the Lord. So when you had this experience with the bull, that sort of was a wake-up call? Yeah. Yeah, the time time was right. <laughs> God, yeah, God convinced me that yeah, I needed to make that commitment. I sort of believe that um, God's wanting me to bring all my brothers and sisters to Him. So that's been a, a goal in my mind for quite a while. How's it going in that goal? <laughs> um, yeah, um, well, all, all our grandkids are Christian and, and our sons sons and daughters and, and their, their wives and spouses. And um, that probably to do with Dallas as well, um, mainly. And, um, but, um, it's, yeah, it's quite, it's quite good working with my brothers and sisters and, and I'm getting more gamer and braver and, 
just the other day we were at a funeral and they were um, singing up nicely the, the Christian songs that were at this funeral, the two sisters I was with. So yes, I, I believe they are, they are um, seeing that I'm probably a better person for knowing God. And so yeah, so that's, that, is, that is good that they, they see that. I've um, read the history of our ancestors and they, they prayed all the time for the future generations to know God and um, and give their and to give their lives to God. So um, I'm sort of obeying obeying what I've been shown. So um, I I have to <laughs> I have to listen to God's word and obey those those commands. This is what my auntie wrote, my mother's sister, and that and she is talking about their their grandparents so at the last there was a hushing and a whispering sadness a tiptoeing and a reverence as the time of departing came but no great lasting anguish as this was the greatest heritage emily and william my great great grandparents left us a faith that left no fear of death an unshaken knowledge that we would meet again, a belief in God and heaven and an inner assurance that we belong to God forever. What, what greater inheritance could they leave us? My name is Dallas and the reason I love Jesus is because he changed my life. He died for my sins and he is my saviour and my redeemer. I don't know where I'd be without him. Um, I was brought up um, going to Sunday school and um, so I've always known that Jesus Christ was my Lord and Saviour. And then I married Sid when we were 20 years old and we went farming. And when I was about 30, my older sister Orwin had a, and her husband had a absolutely amazing encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ and I saw that they had something that I didn't have and I wanted it I just really knew that I needed it so um, when she came to visit me and the cows must have been not milking and anyway so I said to her um, I want what you've got so you know and she said Okay, I'll pray for you. I'll pray that you'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. And, oh my goodness me, I was. Uh, such incredible, incredible experience. And I was just, just, oh, I was just filled with light. I was filled with love. Um, I spoke in tongues. But unfortunately, that was not good for my marriage. Sid just couldn't cope with that um, and um, so I was given the message um, you go out to one of those stupid churches and um, don't bother coming home through the farm gate so I decided okay that's not going to stop me with my walk with the Lord and the Lord just blessed me even though it was so difficult working and lots of things happening. The Lord blessed me in so many ways because just after that um, I was asked to join a lovely Bible study of women and um, so I went to that Bible study and it wasn't very far from the farm so I was able to do that when we went busy on the farm and um, so all sorts of things just fell into place with my um, walk with Jesus. Um, when, when, and we didn't really, I didn't go to church by the way. Um, I wanted to, but I didn't. When my daughter was probably 14, it would have been in 19, probably 88, um, she came home from college and said that she would like to go to a youth group. And um, Sid said, oh yes, that's a really good idea. That's, that's a really good idea. So she joined the Abundant Life Youth Group. And that changed my life as well, because I used to take her to church occasionally and uh, 
I can't tell you. That that church was amazing. The people there were just welcomed me, even though I wasn't there a lot. Um, their worship was amazing. And one day when I was at church, praise and worship, and God gave me a vision. And it was actually quite sobering. It was a vision of our Lord Jesus Christ being whipped. Um, and it was horrific. There was just blood and flesh just going all over the place. And I suddenly realised that he had gone through that for me. That's how much he loved me. You know, it was, I just, I just thought, wow, what a Lord we have. It was so amazing. And another time I was in church and um, the Lord Jesus gave me this scripture. Mike was preaching on from Acts and um, um, it was Acts 16 verse 33. And it said, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you and your family will be saved. And I just knew it was like, it was, I knew that the Lord was talking to me. He was telling me, you believe in me, follow after me, and you and your household will be saved. And that is, that's all, that's what happened. First of all, my daughter Suzanne, um, was baptised probably when she was about 17 or 18. And then my second son, Bryce, had an amazing encounter with the Lord Jesus when he was 23. And Colin, probably when he was like 27. And oh, oh, honestly, when, when they told me that they had given their hearts to the Lord, oh, I just rejoiced. Absolutely, it was just like, thank you, Jesus, you're just... What a blessing. How am I so blessed? I am so blessed. And um, also another time too, um, I hadn't been water baptised and um, somebody at Abundant Life Church said to me, um, now Dallas, we're going to have a baptism, water baptism, and you know, you're very welcome to come and be baptised. Then they said, but you've got to get permission from your husband, Sid. And I thought, oh, well, that's the end of that idea. However, I asked him and he said, didn't even reply about it. So the next morning I was in the cow shed and I was going up and down the hearing bone and I was putting on cups and I was just saying, okay, Lord, if I'm not meant to be baptized, what are baptized today? That's okay, you know, that's how it's meant to be. And then Sid said to me, oh well, he said, I suppose he said, you better go and get ready if you're going to go off and do that. Oh, I couldn't believe it. It was like, it's like a miracle, absolutely a miracle. Um, and that was another amazing experience. I've, oh, I can't tell you. When I came out of that water with my hands in the air, it was like, oh, I don't know, I just, it was a, something I just haven't got the words to describe. And the next major thing that happened was in 2006, when Sid came home and he said to me, and he's quite shaken, he said to me, I should have been killed by a bull today. And I said, oh, I said, what happened? And then he told me what had happened and I said to him oh, you do realize don't you that the Lord saved you today and he said yes I know he did and I said right so you'll be coming to church with me and he said yes there's something else I'd like to say to those of you who have had partners or not partners and husbands or wives together at church every Sunday, I don't think you realise how precious it is to have your husband there. And that's the blessing I got when Sid started coming to church with me. It was 
such a blessing. You know, we come home and we discuss the sermon and and then, you know, Sid reads his Bible every morning and he'll tell me what he's reading in his Bible. I just want to say, Jesus has blessed me. Yes, those years on the farm sometimes were not easy. Sometimes they were very, very difficult. But God was with me. Hello, my name is Tanya and I love Jesus because without him I wouldn't be here today and he has shown me so many blessings throughout my life. The biggest blessing being my daughters, Michaela and Madison. I wasn't much older than Michaela and Maddie when I gave my life to Jesus. I was brought up in a semi-Christian home. My parents um, weren't born again Christians, but they went to church and we prayed, etc. Um, fortunately, my sister and I had a lovely cousin whose faith is very strong. And she took us under her wing and um, used to pray with us and at the age of 13 and 14 my sister and I gave our life to Jesus. When I was in my early 20s um, I went through a very difficult time um, losing my mum and my sister in the space of eight months. It was a horrible time in my life. Um, I was very um, lost. I questioned my faith um, and decided to run away so I went to the UK where I got a job as a receptionist in a gym and on the first day of my um, job I was put on the desk with a South African lady Elizabeth and just turned out that Elizabeth take a deep breath <laughs> Elizabeth was a Christian and we became friends and a few weeks later Elizabeth invited me to her church um, so off we went to the Presbyterian Church in Hatfield and Lo and behold, on that day, the preacher preached about um, dealing with loss and um, grief. And as I sat in that church, it was as if I was the only person there. Every single word he said was directed at me. And I was so emotional. I was so overcome by the Holy Spirit. And I went up for prayer. When I left that church, I, was, I felt like I'd been born again. Um, it was like this huge weight was just lifted off my shoulders. The burden was gone, the questions were gone, and I couldn't wait to get home to South Africa. So I returned home, and about a year later, I met Garth. Uh, we built a house, we had a family, and we immigrated to New Zealand. We lived in Wellington for two years, and Garth got an offer for a transfer here to Omokoroa, uh, which we obviously took. and. Just my other big blessing was just by chance I was reading through the, my emails and I came across the email on Cyberlink and there was an application for a job at the Omakaroa Community Church. <laughs> so I thought, oh, that must be a nice job to have. So I thought, I've got nothing to lose, let's apply for it, which I did. And here I am three years later with the best job in the world, surrounded by the best family, loving family in the world. So. That's why I love Jesus, because he has blessed me so richly throughout my life. I am Maddie, and why I love Jesus is because he's given me an amazing family and lovely friends and a lovely world that I live in today. Hi, my name's Michaela, and I love Jesus because he's blessed me with a lovely family and I've got a roof over my head and we live in an amazing place. and. I know I can trust him with the future ahead. Here I am in Mokoroa, standing with the wooden carving behind me of Reverend Joseph, who was the first European settler in Mokoroa in 1877. But there he is with his Bible. And here I am today with my Bible continuing the same work of glorifying Jesus and exalting him as the saviour and the answer and the solution for this nation and particularly for here in Amokaroa. And we're thankful, I'm thankful for the rich Christian heritage that we have in this nation. But we always need a spiritual awakening, spiritual revival, and that comes needs to come to every generation and it needs to come again to New Zealand and to you.
And it comes through a calling and a challenge, first of all, to make sure that you're ready to enter the kingdom of God. And you've been listening to various testimonies and, and stories of how God has just impacted people's lives. And you also need an encounter with God. So I'm going to share one Bible verse with you and then just give you an opportunity to respond, to open up your heart to God right now and make sure that your, your heart is right, that you've made peace with God, that you know your Creator. You know that if you were to die today, you would go to heaven and you have the salvation of your soul. So the Bible verse I want to share with you comes from the book of Romans. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 says that if you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. First of all, you have to be convinced in your heart that there is a creator, that this world is not just an accident, that you're making a decision to acknowledge that there is a supreme being, there is a higher power, there is a glorious creator who is eternal and he established this universe for the purpose of life here on planet earth and God has a plan and a purpose for you. So first of all you need to believe in God and all of the testimonies in this video have really been to encourage that faith that God is real. We have evidence through just creation and also through God's word, the message that he has sent to us through his prophets. But more than that, we have living witnesses for Jesus in our own lives. We who believe have experienced and we've tasted that the Lord is good. And that's why I try to encourage everyone I meet, have faith in God. Now after that, you also have to realize that we have all sinned. Our sin separates us from God. But there is a solution. And that is that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. So Jesus carried your sins to the cross and died for you. But he didn't stay dead. He had to conquer death. He had to conquer the devil. And that's what the gospel is about. Jesus died, but he rose from the dead. So to be saved, you have to believe that in your heart. You have to believe that Jesus is alive. And then you have to confess it with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. So right here in Amokaroa, looking at this statue of a man holding the Bible, I also want to encourage you to get the word of God into your heart and make that confession unto salvation. And confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart that he has risen from the dead. And that's why when you pray, even if you pray right now, he'll be listening to you and he can hear you. So I just ask you to, I call you to make a commitment to God. If you have been known the Lord at one point of time, but are not following him strongly and firmly, now is your time to turn to Jesus and follow him. Make a recommitment of your life to him. Or if you've never given your life to Jesus, I want to lead you in this confession of faith right now. You can be saved. You can open your heart to God. So just realize God is watching you. And I want to lead you in a salvation prayer and a confession of faith. So please say these words after me. Lord Jesus, I believe you died on the cross for me. I believe you're alive. You have risen from the dead. I believe in God my creator and I ask that you forgive me of any wrong thing I have done and purify my heart Lord Jesus I open my heart to you come into my heart and save me be my Lord and Savior I confess with my mouth Jesus is Lord I believe in my heart God raised him from the dead and I accept your promise that I will be saved. So thank you for making that confession of faith and I also just encourage you to join a church that loves Jesus and here at Amokaroa Community Church 
we'll be happy to welcome you and receive you, encourage you and bless you. Feel free to contact us and we're here to just tell you Jesus loves you, God loves you and the greatest thing is belonging to the kingdom of God, being a part of his people. So be encouraged today through these awesome testimonies of encounters of God, I love Jesus testimonies. There'll be more to come. But these have been awesome and awesome that you've been able to join us and also call upon the name of the Lord and have that assurance that you are and will be eternally saved.